Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. In the United States, there are many automakers that are trying to push their limit to realize the $25,000 electric vehicle dream. The brand like Chevy Bolt and Fiat, they are trying really hard to bring the price point down. Everyone can afford an electric vehicle, but that comes with the cost, which is the cost of the battery and the cost of the material, like make, make sure the car looks premium. And that is really hard in the United States. But that's not a dream in here. And where am I? I'm in Beijing, China. So the last time when I came back to my home country, that was six years ago, and because of the pandemic. And this time, the biggest thing I feel when I come back, it is the electric vehicle. And what happened is on the city road, you can see there are almost half of the vehicles are the electric vehicles. All the taxis are electric vehicles, and people driving electric vehicles. And how the evolution could be that fast in China? And also, the price point of the car is ridiculous low. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through one car that I actually drive for like about three days. And then you'll see why I'm saying that. And in China, there's many automakers that are making the electric vehicle. And that's kind of one reason why there are so many electric cars on the road. And including Tesla. I think Tesla went into China uh, a few years back. But in today's videos, I mainly want to talk about the Chinese automakers. There are a few companies I can name. I think one is the BYD, which is the most famous Chinese automaker. I think they have different vehicles from small sedan to the large mini one. They're all electric. And I think they sell a lot in China. And then <clears throat> there's new automakers, things like Rivian, Lucid in the United States. There's one brand called the uh, uh, Li Auto, and they're famous for you can actually feel the gas on a car and there's a generator inside your vehicle that it will actually generate the electric power to charge the battery. So they have a smaller battery, but you can feel the gas if you drive to a country road. So that's very convenient. And there's another brand called the Neo, and which is fully electric. But the interesting part is that they can actually swap the battery. Instead of the charging your battery, you go to a station and they take off your battery from your car and then they put a new battery. So that saves a lot of time and then solve the problem of charging. And even through for the fast charging, it takes 20 to 30 minutes. And then there's another brand, which is the Xpeng. Started very early and they made very successful cars. And that is the car I'm gonna show you in today's video. And that is here. So this one, I got this uh, Xpeng P7. I have been driving this car for like three days. And we can do a quick look at the exterior, the wheel and the back and the front. To be aware, I think this car is roughly around the Tesla Model 3 size. But what my real feel is that like the inside is a little bigger than the Tesla. It also looks pretty sleek from the front, the iconic highlight, and then there's like a light bar across the front. So it looks pretty nice and pretty futuristic. And this car also has the front double wishbone and rear multi-link suspension. Similar uh, configuration in the Tesla Model 3, which is mostly equipped in the sporty car. I think this is like a, a regular size front, square shape. It's roughly around the same size as the Tesla Model 3, a little bigger. And now let's look at the trunk. So the trunk is uh, the good sides but the only issue i think this opening is very small so if you want to put large stuff in it i think it will be a little harder see if there's an underneath comfort oh there's no underneath compartment so that's definitely smaller than the tesla model 3 at tesla model 3 you have a big space underneath here but this one it doesn't that's basically the trunk this car i have is a 625 kilometer range 
So that's roughly around 390 miles. And this is equipped with a large battery pack. Now, however, you can have a 480 kilometer range, which is roughly around 300 miles. This is a good range in the United States, and that can basically take you to anywhere. And also this car uh, has a single motor in the rear. So the zero to 60 is around 6.7 seconds. It's not fast as Tesla, but it's fast enough as an electric vehicle. It equipped with all the premium features I will show in the later of this video of the interior. It also looks pretty good. Now the price. And this one I have single motor 0 to 60, 6.7 seconds, 390 miles run. So this one costs roughly around $30,000 if I convert it from Chinese Yuan to the US dollars. However, the base model, which is, has some assistant driving features and but the range is 300 miles which is already good. And that one only cost about like $25,000. I think $25,000 to $26,000. Uh, in Chinese Yuan, that's roughly around 170 and 180 Chinese Yuan. And that's the price I confirmed with the Xpeng dealership in here. And that's the car I used for the last three days. And now I'm gonna get into this car, give it a shot. And then the next step is to go through the interior and the smart intelligent features of this car. We're gonna unlock the car, open it, and now I'm gonna do a test drive uh, and see how it feels. My first impression, this is a typical electric car feeling when I'm driving it. Very smooth and very responsive. As I'm pushing the pedal, it gives me the corresponding response. Okay, now a quick summary of my feeling as I'm driving this car. Uh, when I'm turning it to the sport mode, uh, I feel it is feeling much more uh, responsive and much more faster. And as like the standard mode, I feel it's a little slow. I think I'm getting used to like dual motor uh, electric vehicle and this is single motor, so it feels a little slow. But as I'm uh, changing it to the sport mode, um, even though it's going to reduce the range, but it feels pretty fast. Uh, as I'm pushing the pedal, it is really fast. Uh, on the other side, the suspension is toned a little soft, uh, other than Tesla Model 3, as I'm driving Model 3 for like three years in the past. So I feel this is pretty soft. And uh, as my wife and my kids sitting in the car before, I think they feel pretty comfortable because the soft uh, suspension. But from driving perspective, it's uh, less sporty, uh, I feel. and. Again, it's the other side of the coin, which is, it feels like pretty comfortable. Uh, so far, this is a good car. If you drive in the city road, pretty comfortable and pretty premium interior looking. Uh, I can't believe a car like this is at this price point, but it is, right? I think it is like $25,000 car. And this price does not even include the tax incentive. So. Pretty good, uh, pretty good feeling. I think as I'm driving it, uh, I don't have any complaint about it. Okay, so I think that's the test driving of this car. Uh, so next, I'm gonna take you to the interior of this car and then walk you through it and then why I'm saying I feel the interior is also pretty premium. That's from like different angles, the material of the interior and also the, the infotainment system. I, I feel as I'm using it, uh, it is really smart. Um, especially the voice assistant. That's the most impressive part as I'm using this car. Uh, you can do pretty much everything from the voice assistant and uh, similar as you use the, sen the center touch screen. And you can roll up and down the window and you can uh, change like different settings and of like different driving mode. Uh, all of those are available through the voice assistant. Also the navigation you can just speak to it where you want to go and then it can print you all the options and then it asks you which one you want to choose. And then you just look at the screen and then say, hey, I want to choose number two, and which is the destination I want to go. And then the car will start like navigating to it, which is super convenient. Uh, I feel that's a good feature that Tesla should add, but we'll see. Okay, now move to the next. Okay, now let's get into this uh, Xpeng P7 and get into this car and in front of you you see like a cabin camera and also like a front display and then in here there's like a 15 inch big display and that's the main screen and I'll get into that like uh, later in the video here I think you can see the car it has like a full trim on the door 
and handle and the button I think everything looks pretty premium and if you look at the seat so this is kind of like a sporty shape of seat and I think this company also make it more looks more sporty as I'm driving this car for like a couple of days it is pretty comfortable here in the center console you have a big space you have a push button and then it just pop open and you have a big space in here you can put a lot of stuff here and from here you can see there's two USB port and there's a 12 volt power outlet and that's this center console compartment and here if you push button I think it's open up the space that you can put water in it and now I'm gonna put like two water bottles in here there's a space in here that's mainly for the phone phone charging if I put my phone here and um, it started to charge so only one while it's charging and compared with Tesla Tesla has two but this one only has one but this is okay come to the door and you have a relatively big space in here I think it's definitely okay to put water in there and you can also put like phones or any other stuff here uh, so it's pretty deep good amount of the space and similar designs the Tesla Model 3 has a glass roof from the front and all the way to the back and also in the back you have this light button as well you can tap it and then we just open up the light okay and now let's get back to the the rear seat and look at the space I think from here you can see there's also the same similar wood trim and the door handle yeah, like a compartment. I, th I think you can pull in like two big water bottles. Uh, you can see here. Uh, it looks pretty good. And also, you can see this driver's seat is the one that I use uh, as I'm driving. Uh, I'm a, a six foot uh, height. And but here, see, I still have plenty of space. I think I can pull like one one fist in here uh, as my knee. So uh, I think the space is. Uh, very good and now let's look at the car uh, in here I think there's uh, like a, a wind here you can adjust the the, the angle and the port um, unfortunately this is now the USB-C port and as this car is I think a 2022 model so it's a little bit old but I think the new car they should switch to the USB-C and the back door I think you have uh, three seats in here and here you can pull this uh, middle console. I think you can do two, two cup holders. Pretty normal, not super fancy. But the back seat is the uh, leather stitch seat. It looks pretty premium. Okay, and next, uh, I want to give you a quick overview of like the, the infotainment screen. So this big screen has all the information that you need. I think here you see a main screen that's showing the map. And then there's like a sidebar that gives you all the important information that you need mostly for your driving this car because it's manufactured in china everything is chinese so i will just do the translation in here for you i think the first thing is the navigation and here you can just search any place that you want to go and it's very intelligent and if you just tap a certain word and then it can actually find all the relevant destinations and then you can just pick which one you want and go back and then here this is the the Bluetooth music that you can just play the music from here and then you just play right and then this is uh, the Bluetooth phone and this is the notification center the map as I using it it is pretty fast and pretty smooth so uh, it is good and then you can see from the map you can see this is like the charging stations and that we can charge this car this is like uh, x pong specific supercharger similar to Tesla this is in China and you can just tap it and just navigate to here and then charge your car and now let's give you some quick introduction of like the basic feature right and here this is the driving mode it has standard sport uh, echo comfort and x pedal and x pedal is the one that we i think most of the tesla owners are familiar with the x pedal converted to tesla language and so that's like one pedal driving and also there's some other uh controls and that's like open the trunk and this is open the slow charging port and in china we have two charging ports one is a slow charging port and the other is the fast charging port and this is the fast charging port the ui looks pretty intuitive and very easy to use and very responsive and this is the ambient light uh 
if you change to like a specific color uh, you can actually adjust the color of the ambient light and as for now it's in the daylight that is now very clear but it will be very clear during the night and another good feature this car has is the assistant driving so xpon call it x pilot but this is very similar as the tesla autopilot and in here it has all the safety features and if we scroll down i can help to translate here this is all the basic autopilot features and they can help to keep the car in the lane and it will basically steer itself it supports the change the line if you turn the light signal i heard xpon is probably the best uh autopilot driving company i think in in china but uh, i'm not 100 percent sure i think this is kind of like ba based on my three days use of this car i feel a it's pretty much sufficient for my need as especially when i'm driving on the highway if you know like in china there's a lot of traffic and uh, it's really hard to uh, auto steer but i think as i drive on on the highway and it really works uh so a little bit more about the x pilot driving one additional feature this car has is the automatic parking and it's very similar as tesla but also a little different and what this car can do is it can memorize your parking garage this is very common in china that like most people live in the apartment or condo that they have like a large parking garage and will drive into your parking garage you enable the memorized parking and then you drive the car and park your car into your spot and then this car will automatically memorize your spot and the next time we we'll get into the parking garage you can just get off the car and push the button on the key hold this button you can see it has a uh, P on it if you just hold this button and then the car will automatically park to, into your spot that you can walk behind your car and see it's parking in there it's really fancy but like i don't have a live demo for that uh, in this video but that's like a very nice feature and also you can actually interrupt the auto automatic parking if you just hit the button again and that will help you to kind of stop it there so kind of mostly for the safety another good feature i think is this button if I tap it in here so it gives you all the applications so this whole infotainment system is built on top of like the Android and what like Xpeng uses is called the X Smart OS so they build this from like ground up and this is mostly like your Android phone and this is all the apps and this is like let's say for for example this one this is the 360 cameras if you tap it you just open the 360 camera and a lot of people really want it if you own a Tesla and that's not really available but in this car it is available give you like the the different side and now this is like a 3d view and see I'm just parking in a street in here this all like Chinese in here and but you can imagine this is your Netflix this is your Disney Plus this is your Hulu and this is all the applications and like Apple Music uh, Spotify and but those are all like the Chinese uh, applications the one of the amazing thing of this car and uh, you can actually use those apps while you're driving <laughs> isn't that amazing and uh, is that insane one night as i'm driving the car and then my daughter was actually looking at the animations from the back seat and uh, it's actually you can play it i uh, i don't think this is not really possible in the u.s makers cars uh at least as for now i don't see until you jailbreak it some people use the carplay and then you can actually watch the video but this is not really possible that you can actually uh, see those videos and while you're driving and that's very cool all the applications you you can use and uh, you you can certainly go to the app store so that's the app store you can go to go to the app store and then you can download more apps so that's basically your Android phone on the car. Okay, so now uh, we get in here. This is uh, Xpeng supercharging station. As you can see, I think in China, all those companies they actually share their charging station. And here I can see actually two different uh, other brands of the car also charging here. And there's many electric vehicle brands in China. So if I double tap this, and this is the uh, slow charging port. And today I'm going to use the other side of the port, which is the fast charging port. And if I double tap this button from the key fob, it'll open the fast charging port. Now I'm going to get this 
charging cable in here and plug it in. From the app, I can see, uh, I can click this button, then I kind of start charging my car. Okay, so now the charging is started. And let's see, and now let's go back to the car and see how the charging looks like. Okay, and now uh, we can see the, the charging status started to display on the screen. And this is in the front screen of the car. So now we can see it start to increase the the range uh, from like 280 something I started and now it's like 301 uh, kilometer. So it's 200 amps and 349 volts. So this is roughly around like 69 kilowatts power, which is around like 70 kilowatts power. Uh, I think this is a, a little slower than the Tesla Super charger but this is definitely the speed of the fast charging should be charged to 100% within an hour so now you get a gist of this car and what do you think of it and this is Xpon P7 the one I'm driving is the 625 kilometer range car I think it has all the safety features it has all the autopilot features that car is roughly around like a bit of over $30,000 if I convert from Chinese Yuan to the US dollars. If you get the base model, which is only 480 kilometers, which is roughly around 300 miles, and which is still a good range. If you go back to the US, right, so 300 miles electric car, it's a relatively a good range. And But this car only costs $25,000, not included the tax incentive. So what do you think of this car? And what if this car is sold in the US at a similar price? And I think a lot of things could be changed. It's gonna everyone's still gonna buy Tesla and Rivian or other cars? Answer may be no. But there's a lot of complicated issues that the car manufactured in China is really hard to get into US and there's a lot of like the import tax and that makes the car more expensive. But in the other side of the world, in China, we do have this type of car, which is sell uh, very cheap, but the car is equipped with all the features that you need. It's now better than Tesla, but it is very close. And the most important thing is you can afford it. And everyone can afford it. And everyone can buy an electric vehicle. And that's what happening in Beijing, China, that you can see there are so many electric vehicles on the road. And there's a lot of charging stations in every gas station. So, so they build equivalent amount of the charging stations in the city, pretty much similar as the gas station. So everyone is trying to get an electric vehicle. And that's kind of the, the place I feel that really the world is changing. It is really accelerating and much faster than the US market. So that's the end of this video and what I have field and what I have what really impressed me after six years coming back to my home country and the world is really changing especially the electric vehicle in here so hope this can help you and give you more information what happened in the other side of the world hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next one thank you